Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with the main menu creation process. Now in the previous episode, I showed you how to get the basic layout, how to get it displayed on the screen, and uh, you know, all that cool stuff. But now, in today's episode, we're going to be dedicating this to actually styling the buttons and making it look a little bit fancier. Now, if you haven't watched the previous episode, I make, I'd advise that you go ahead and do so using the annotation in the top left hand corner, uh, so you can see exactly how all of this was created, and so you can follow along. But anyway, without further ado, let's dive in and continue on. So at the moment you can see I've got these buttons here and they're all organized into these little um, vertical boxes. Now for visibility, we're just going to be turning these the, the visibility of these vertical boxes on and off for each screen. But for the buttons, we actually need to style those independently. So we can't just style the whole vertical box. So we've got to go one by one and set custom images for all of these. Now, you need to make sure that you have imported all of the assets like I showed you in the previous episode. I've got all of those in a menu assets folder now, and I've got all the buttons in here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to get these buttons to look exactly how they should, set up the margins, get them in the right place, get a logo in, and all of that cool stuff. And I'm also going to be showing you how to set up like hover effects, normal, um, you know, button clicking sounds, and stuff like that. So let's just go ahead and find a button that we want to stylize. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the start game button. It's going to be the one at the very top on the main menu. And you can see all of my buttons here are all named individually so I know exactly what button is which. So to style this first button, let's go to style. And you can see I've got three different states. I've got normal, hovered, and pressed. So normal is going to, how it's, is going to be how it looks when the mouse is nowhere near it. There's nothing over it. Hovered is going to be, you know, when you're rolling over it, so it goes a little different color, just so you know that the mouse is on it. And then pressed is going to be, you know, a, another variation, just so you know it's being pressed down. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use these default images, and then set those to a normal. And then for the hovered, I'm just going to use a little blue tint, so you can see that it's actually being hovered over. So to do that, just go to normal go to image, and then you've got to go ahead and set one an image from the content browser. So I've got all of these images, don't forget you can download these in the from the link in the description. So I'm just going to go ahead and look for start game, wherever that is. And I'm going to drop it in here, just like that, and you can see it's coming. What I do advise that you do is set the margin to zero, so it adds, you know, so it keeps the right size exactly how it should be. And you can see it looks quite nice. So the next thing we need to do is go over to hovered and we're going to set the same image but this time for the hover effect if you want to if you have another image for hover you can just change the image for that but what I'm going to be doing is just simply setting a little blue tint just like this and you can see it's come through in the little preview over here. So if I was to go ahead and press play now I've got my start button and when I hover over it if I could see my mouse Hold up, let me just go ahead and launch it instead. You're going to see that the button turns slightly blue, just as a little indicator, um, you know, so you know when you've actually hovered over it. Now, this is usually done just to ease the transition, just make it run a little bit more fluid. It's great. I advise you do it. Um, like I said, you don't have to create custom images for this. You can just use a simple little tint like I am. So now, when I hover over my image, you can see it's turning blue. But you can see there's a little bit of adjustment in size when I hover over this as well. That's because I haven't got the same settings for the margin on the hovered and the normal. So let's go ahead and adjust that so we can get it just right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop running that and I'm going to go back to the widget and as you saw before I set the margin from 0 0.25 in uh, normal I set that to 0 so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on hovered. So there we go, I'm just going to go ahead and chuck that in a zero. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same for pressed. Let's just go ahead and set the normal image for now. So it just goes back to default when it's pressed. So I'm just going to load that in there. And then with the margin, I'm going to set that to zero. Now the next step is entirely up to you. The next step is going to be for adding in sounds for when you press the button or when you hover over the button. Now, as of right now, I don't have any button sounds, but if you want to, you can import some and use them. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and use 
you know, this, uh, this little sound here for pressed sound. So when you actually click it, you're going to hear a little sound. So if I go ahead and press launch, you're going to hear that in a second. Hopefully you'll hear it anyway. Um, there's loads of places that you can actually get royalty free sound effects for stuff like this. So it may be worth uh, checking those out. I may or may not leave a couple links in the description for that. But anyways, if I bring my game over here and I start pressing on stuff as soon as I can find my mouse. You can hear it plays the, the, the little uh, clap sound in the background. Um, obviously it's going to sound a lot better if you actually have proper uh, sound effects for it. But you know, either way, you know, it's the functionality that's important. And this is going to allow you to put in loads of cool stuff into your own menu. So now let's just quickly go ahead and do the same thing that we did previously uh, for the start game button for all the other buttons. It's quite simple really. Uh, so just go ahead and find the next button. For me that is going to be options on my menu. So options. And we're just going to go ahead and drag that in there into pressed, hover, and normal. And I'm also going to set the margins to zero accordingly. Zero. And once again, zero down wherever it is. So normal, that's zero. Hover, that's zero. Pressed, let's go ahead and set that to zero as well. If we go ahead and press play now, it should be exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the exit game button now. I'm not going to do all the buttons for now. Um, you know, it should be pretty self-explanatory as to how you can do it. But hopefully, this should be, you know, a basic understanding of how you can actually get an image in there. Change the tint, change the margin, and uh, get some basic sounds in there. I'm also going to show you in a second how to get your logo in on top of here. So, you can so it actually looks more like a game menu. You know, usually you have the game logo at the top. And then you've got all your buttons here and everything. So let's go ahead and do that in a second. So pressed, hovered, and lastly, the normal. And now we've got a fairly decent looking menu. It's starting to come together, and that's the important thing. So if I go ahead and press launch now, got to make sure I save the selected stuff. Give it a second to load up, and we should have a pretty nice looking little menu here. So now, here we go. Whoops. Here we go, if we drag it on, we got a pretty decent looking menu. Now, as of right now, only the first button actually has a hot for effect. That's because I only, you know, had time to put the one in there. But you know how to do it, so go ahead and do the same for all of the other buttons. And hopefully, you should have a decent looking menu. So you can see here, when I roll over it, my mouse is a little bit dark at the moment, as I can't see it. I've got to show you how to do the cursor in a short while. It's very simple. But anyway, there you go. We've got our buttons in there, but, and uh, from here we can actually add all of the functionality that we need to. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to get an image in here. I'm going to put this image right at the top here. It can be whatever you like, but for me, I'm going to make it a logo. But the first thing I'm going to do here is that I'm actually going to center the anchor for this so it's displayed just above, you know, the text of the buttons here. Quite simple. And I'm going to drag it in. Now, the image, you can set that to whatever you want. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and import a Virtus Education logo. So I'm just going to go grab wherever the file may be. For me, it's going to be in here. I'm going to try and get one with a transparent background if I've got one on hand. Logos, there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag that into the content browser first. Just like that, it's very simple. And once again, we're going to go ahead and set the image to this, and we're going to make sure we set the margin to zero if there is one. But uh, yeah, it's, it's starting to look pretty nice. If you wanted to, you could adjust the color of that slightly. So right now, you know, it's got just normal RGB values. So it's going to be to one, and then I can go ahead and adjust this to whatever color. But for now, I'm just going to press cancel and leave that how it is. So the task for you for the next video is to go ahead and set, over, uh, set up all of the rollover effects for the options buttons which are on the side here. And then once you've done that, go ahead and dive into the next tutorial where we're going to be showing you how to add all of the functionality for this stuff. So we're going to be showing you how to hide and close the options menu. We're going to show you how to make the menu open a level, quit the game, and the options menus. We're going to show you how to change the resolution and all of that cool stuff. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.